Hello, I'm Axel Rodbart, Doc History, and I'm here in front of Harding Middle School in Des Moines, Iowa, discussing Kids Who Changed Us. Let's go inside and see what took place inside of these historic halls. It was here that one of the most important Supreme Court cases for kids today took place. In these halls, alongside these lockers. And it involved a girl, Mary Beth Tinker. Her father was a reverend here in Des Moines. When she grew up though, other than that, it wasn't a particularly notable childhood. She went ice skating, went on double dates, rollerblading, much as any other preteen, early teenager would do. But her family believed in social Justice. They believed in what's known as the social gospel, that we should do what is basically right. So when it came to segregation, for example, and racial discrimination, her family was against it, even as many of their neighbors supported that principle. And when it came to the Vietnam War and the idea of kids dying in a foreign country, they also were against it. In 1965, it was the early days of the Vietnam War, and much of the country was not yet against it to the extent that they would be a decade later. Senator Robert Kennedy of New York, though brother of the recently assassinated John F. Kennedy, called for a Christmas truce in the Vietnam War. Well, to support the Christmas truce, Mary Beth and her older brother John, who was in high school, and one of John's friends, Chris Eckhart, they got together and they decided that they were going to wear black armbands to school in order to protest on December 16, 1965. They also decided to fast that day, not to eat any food as a means of protesting and to do the same on New Year's Eve. Well, the principals at the high schools got together, not at Harding Junior High, but at the actual high school. The principals got together and decided that they were not going to let the students protest the Vietnam War inside of the classroom. School was a place for learning, not for politics. That's how the thinking went. Well, the kids wore their armbands anyway. Mary Beth, even though she went to a middle school, the General ruling from the high schools still applied to her since it was part of the secondary schools. And in algebra class, in a classroom much like the one we're in right now, Mary Beth Tinker was called out by her teacher for wearing a black armband and was sent to the office. There, the assistant principal asked her to remove the armband, which she did, but she was still suspended. Okay. What happened? School board met in January and upheld the decision of the principals, upheld the suspensions. And Mary Beth, her brother John, and Chris Eckhart, represented by their families, sued the Des Moines Independent Community School District. That lawsuit found its way all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Even though two lower courts, a district court and the Court of Appeals found that the school was correct in banning armbands as a means of protest, the Supreme Court was divided on the issue. There are a number of different opinions. Justice Hugo Black, for example, said that schools had the right not only to ban armbands, but to restrict free speech among students. He said that as if we opened the gates and allowed armbands just like this one, then what was going to be next? Break-ins, sit-ins, all sorts of lions, he said, all sorts of problems. Kids would have too many rights. They'd be running amok in the streets. We couldn't have that. Justice Potter Stewart, who eventually ended up supporting Tinker and the other kids in the case, Justice Stewart said that kids really weren't intellectually capable of having rights, that they were too young, that they couldn't understand the full responsibilities of the First Amendment, therefore they didn't have First Amendment rights. It was Abe Fortas, a recently new member of the Supreme Court, who said no, we cannot be ruled by fear. Sure, kids might start ruling the streets. 
Sure, we might have lions and break-ins and sit-ins and all of these problems, but that is not a reason to deny someone a right. The kids have just as much of a First Amendment right at their schools as the adults do. In essence, freedom of speech does not end at the schoolhouse gate. Ultimately, six other justices sided with Justice Fortas, and so it was a seven to two decision by the Supreme Court. The Tinker kids had the right to wear a black armband to protest what they believed was a unfair war. The black armbands they determined, the Supreme Court determined, did not disrupt the class, did not disrupt the learning. It was a quiet form of protest and something that kids were allowed to do. Over here now, at Harding Middle School, they have a portrait of the young Mary Beth Tinker with her armband supporting peace. Kind of impressive if you think about it, being a middle school student and then having your school eventually paint a mural of you on the school walls. Harding Middle School still functions today as you can see it. They're preparing for the start of the school year soon. But it was here that freedom of speech for students in schools across the United States were guaranteed. It was here in these hallways in classrooms like these that Mary Beth Tinker became one of the kids who changed us. For Doc History, I'm Axel Rothbart.